All right, so we're heading out today for a bike tour. We're gonna head up to Oregon and uh, we've got a route planned that we're gonna take. This is one we've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, so we gotta get down to the Bay Area. That's our start for today. To our start, we have a couple of connections to get there. Yep. We'll so a couple buses, couple trains, some riding. So we're gonna try to, we're gonna do a lot today. Yeah. Good, how are you? All, all the sleeper car people look so refreshed. Yeah. All the coach people are... Our eyes are like sleeping. Yeah. Okay, we just rolled into Klamath Falls, Oregon. Took the Red Eye Express up. We left last night, it was around 9.45 p.m. Two hour delay somewhere between Reading and Dunsmuir or something like that, or before Reading. Right around three in the morning, the train just stopped. Two hour delay. That happened last time, we had a three hour delay last time. Yeah, we did. So, yeah, it's 9.30, but we're here in downtown and we're gonna go find ourselves some coffee and supplies for the ride today. We are gonna try and get to Crater Lake, I think. That's our plan. Or, be or before Crater Lake, camp out there somewhere, get some sleep, and then start fresh tomorrow and hopefully get a little bit bigger ride tomorrow, but we'll see. Okay, here we are, back to our favorite store where we start all of our tours from Klamath Falls from, here at the uh, Holiday Market, downtown Klamath Falls. And uh, we're gonna supply up for our ride today. Here, um, yeah, so we got Miss Cole's bike set up. Good morning. People are very friendly here in Klamath Falls. So, I'm going to do a quick little overview of our bike setup here. So, Miss Cools is running the. So, both of us are running the uh, rear rack and pannier setup. I have uh, a frame bag, and yeah, I added my frame bag because I need to carry food in here, and then in here I've got tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, pillow, and change of clothes, gloves, and a rain jacket. It's supposed to rain at one or two days at least. The route we will be following begins in Klamath Falls and travels 410 miles to Portland, Oregon through the Cascade Mountain Range. There's 30,000 feet of elevation gain and 162 miles of gravel and dirt trails, 246 miles of pavement. The route is called the Oregon Cascades Volcanic Arc 400 and was created by the group Our Mother the Mountain or also called OMTM.
is the morning on day two. We uh, camped here last night and uh, we were hoping that this campground was open but it was actually closed. I don't know, I was hoping, I'm hoping we can get to uh, Oak Ridge today. But that's that's only 100 miles from here. 100 miles. We still have a lot more. We have a lot of climbing. A lot of climbing. Yeah. Oh, look at that sunrise. Red sky. Rain. There's been some rain in the forecast. There's rain in the forecast. It's supposed to rain either today or tomorrow, so starting to see some clouds rolling in. Good thing we brought our rain jackets, right? Yeah. chilly up here, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a little chilly. What do you think of Crater Lake? Wow, it's amazing. It's your first time seeing it? Uh-huh. Yep, my first time. How was the ride up? Um, it was good. Yeah, it was, um, the gradient was gradual and it was it got a little bit windy sometimes. We had to it almost we almost got blown off our bike a couple times, but uh, that was just a couple times. Most of the time, it was we were sheltered, and uh, yeah, it was beautiful. Well, cool. yeah, we got a little descending to do too, so a little more climbing. Got a little more climbing, and then uh, quite a bit of descending. So it's gonna be a bit cold, but hopefully, when we get down to the bottom, it's supposed to be a little bit warmer. So. Let's get rolling, huh? Well, it's basically been been mostly raining all day, uh, but we made it over the uh, big climb there at Crater Lake, and we're just working our way up to Oak Oak Ridge. Is that the, down, the name of the town? Oak Ridge. I think so. Oak Ridge. Yeah. So we're not sure if we'll make it there tonight. We're gonna try, but if not, there's a couple little campgrounds right before the town that we might set up camp there tonight. But yeah, it's been mostly raining today, huh? Yeah, mostly raining. 
feels a little warmer right yeah. now. Yeah, once we drop, warmer. once we drop down off that at the high altitude, down we're down to probably like 45 or 5,000 feet, so it's not too cold. But it looks like we've got a little bit more climbing here. Then there should be another descent down, I think. Anyway, so. Time for some jogging. Thinking of that licorice, actually. Licorice? Okay. The wildberry licorice, yeah. or huckleberry licorice. I want to try that huckleberry licorice. So it's, uh, we're just getting started on day three here. I didn't really film much after Crater Lake yesterday. It was basically raining all day. I just didn't feel like bringing the camera out. Uh, but we basically rode into Oak Ridge last night and got a hotel room. Uh, it just rained, rained all night. It's been raining all, all morning as well. So we've been out now. We're, we're working our way towards, uh, what's it called, McKenzie Bridge? Oh, yeah. McKenzie River Bridge, I think. That's, that's, yeah, so we left our hotel this morning. It was basically pouring rain. It's been raining all morning. And uh, yeah, we're, so we're kind of, we have a, like a big climb this morning. We've been riding for about two hours, been climbing the whole way. And then there's some, a little descent, I think, and then there's another big climb, and then there's a lot of descending down to McKenzie River. Uh, we're not sure what we're gonna do there <clears throat> kind of watching the weather We were hoping to camp out tonight somewhere there uh, But if it's real wet, I don't know. There's yeah. a couple little lodges there So we might we might get a lodge tonight if if it just seems like it's just gonna keep pouring Yeah, see how the day goes and yeah, how we feel when we get there. Yeah, it's about From the from Oak Ridge to there. It's all about 80 miles and you know we're averaging about 10 to 12 miles an hour so we should be there around 4 assuming all goes well should get there around 4 4 30 if we just keep a steady pace and we don't stop a lot yeah yesterday we stopped we hit the lodge at the lake you know we hung out there for a while and then went to that other lodge that had the fireplace going yeah it's hard to resist uh, it it's hard Sit to in front of the fireplace yeah <laughs> Plus we had to do some grocery shopping too and get some supplies, so. Yeah. All that stuff just adds to adds time and slows you down. But uh, yeah. How's your rain gear holding up? Um, actually not bad right now because it's pretty warm. It feels warm right now. You get saturated through, or? Um, it was, maybe it's a little bit wet inside, but it doesn't feel so. Just a little bit. Morning. Happy birthday, Mr. Wabe. Thank you. Made it all the way to my 47th birthday. Can't believe it. And this is the perfect, perfect way to spend it. Yeah, for sure. With the most amazing woman in the whole universe. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on this fun bike tour with me. I do apologize for the rain yesterday. It's not wasn't my fault, but I did look at the weather coming before we came up here and there was rain in the forecast. I just didn't think it was gonna be like that. Yeah, we didn't see much rain in the forecast. We just saw I think like the day. Yeah. That. Yeah and then it looked like it I didn't think it was gonna be like all day non-stop rain i figured it's fall you know it'll be off and on 
But yesterday was just solid, pouring rain all day. And uh, we rode about, well, we did 20 miles and we just got soaked. And then I made the decision that we should just go back to the hotel, back to town and get a hotel. All right, as you can see, we're not out camping tonight. Uh, we decided to get a hotel room here in town uh, because, well, it's kind of a long story. So I'll try to abbreviate it as quickly as possible. So help me along okay. if I'm making this out to be longer than it needs to be. But uh, basically last night we came into this town called uh, Mackenzie River Crossing or Bridge? Mackenzie River Bridge. Yeah. It's actually a little town. There's a well, again, I'm trying not to make this too long, but it's a little town and there's campgrounds throughout this little river valley. It's called the Blue River that runs through here. And there's cottages and log cabins and all kinds of cool stuff and it's a lot of campgrounds. Uh, well, the, as we came in, the first campground we checked out, we had planned to stay the night there last night, but it was technically closed. I don't know, closed early for the season. Uh, there was a big fire here uh, a few weeks ago and so it could have closed early for that. We're not really sure, but we went up to this little town, we went to this uh, restaurant, and uh, we got some food, and we got some supplies for the morning, and we asked the guy if there was any campgrounds around that he knew were open, and he didn't know, and so we thought, well, you know what, there was no one at that campground, and it looked really nice, uh, so we decided to sneak in and just stealth camp there for the night. So when we got there, it was raining, and we found this really cool old tree I don't I think it wasn't a wasn't a redwood tree but it was this really old probably was some kind of a fir tree or something yeah you found it's a really nice dry spot you noticed that the sand was the dirt underneath it was all dry and I was yeah like, oh, wow, I walked we walked through every campsite looking for a spot that would provide some kind of shelter and there was this one spot that had this giant tree and it like had so many branches that it actually under the tree the soil like just the surface of the soil was a little damp but if you if you brushed it away, you'd see that it was dry. So I'm like, hey, this this tree is providing a lot of shade, Sh or you know, shelter. So let's put our tent under this tree. So we set up the tent, we got our tarp out, we used some string, we created like a little awning structure over the top of the tent, and uh, you know, set everything up, went to bed, and right around midnight there was this massive thunderstorm and huge rains came come came down. You could just hear it. You could actually hear it over the river flowing, but. We were, where we were at, we were actually staying pretty dry. It was pretty incredible. It was. It was. It was. Yeah. It was really amazing. The the shelter, how you found the dry spot, and then set up the tarp, uh -huh. kept us mostly, mostly dry, dry. And, and comfortable enough to be able to sleep a little, which otherwise I don't think we would yeah. have really slept. Well, our air mattresses kept us elevated above the ground, and so even though the tent got finally did get wet and things were getting wet inside we were still elevated above the ground and we were mostly dry. So we were able to sleep through the whole night. Uh, we got up around 6.30, packed everything up, and we went back to that same cafe. But, because we were gonna get some hot coffee. Yeah. We were gonna start there, we were gonna get hot coffee, you know, just kind of prepare ourselves for an all day rain event. Cause I had been checking the weather and it was gonna, it, it was supposed to rain all day today. So we're standing out inside, out in front, waiting for them to open. It's almost they open at eight. It's almost eight o'clock. We're standing there. We got our granola that we bought there the day before. We had our almond milk. We had everything ready. We just needed some hot coffee. Eight o'clock rolls up. No one's there. The doors are chained chained closed. And I'm like, I start looking at the schedule, and it's like every day it's open from eight to eight, eight to eight, eight to eight, except for Wednesday. It's closed. Yeah. Closed on Wednesday. Happened. I'm like, wait, is today Wednesday? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Oh no, it's closed. So we're standing there, it's pouring rain, and we decide, well, we got to eat this food because we need to get on the road, and we, we it's going to be wet all day, it's going to be cold, and we need to have calories. So we just ate the granola standing under their little entry awning. See, I told you I'd make yeah. this a long story. It's good. Yeah, long. It's good because. The details. The details help make matter. It interesting. Well, it's to, it's to get us back to here. Yeah. You know, we missed out on so much videotaping on the way here yesterday because it was just, or the day, uh, yeah, yesterday because it was raining all day. So, 
we roll out, we're on the highway and we're trying to find this cool trail. This is kind of like the whole highlight of the route for us. We've been waiting for this single track trail that we saw on all these photographs when we first looked at the route. And so we get to the trailhead and it's closed. The fire that was burning a few weeks ago just got put out literally from this rainstorm. And so it was barricaded off, closed, you know, the fire crews had closed it all down and yet it's been pouring rain and there there's no fire. So I'm like, well, let's let's just do it. I don't want to ride on the highway because the highway is very get the shoulder keeps getting narrower and narrower and there's a lot of big truck traffic, like semi truck traffic and driving very, very fast. It's like sixty five miles an hour and the shoulder is like this wide. So I'm like, you know, I just don't want a chance getting killed by a truck versus, you know, having a fire crew person yell at me for riding on a clo technically closed trail. So I said, let's just do it. We'll, we'll say sorry later. And we start riding this trail and it was going okay. What do you, what do you yeah. think? How did it go on the trail? Maybe. Yeah, it was going pretty good. It was, it was getting, starting to get a little bit um, muddier, I guess, a little bit more trees um, down. And then we ended up getting to this big washout that would look like it was going to be pretty hard to cross. Um, and we didn't know how long that road was going to keep going. Um, it was starting to go, get a little bit slow. We were starting to go a little slow. Yeah, we could um, kind of see where the crew had stopped working because of this big creek wash had washed out this part of the trail. And so we weren't sure if uh, after that how many more trees might have fallen from this recent fire and the damage from the fire. So we were thinking, you know, this is just probably not going to work. And we don't want to be out there in the rain lifting up you know, loaded bikes over tree after tree after tree. It could take us a long time. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to have to bail on this trail. It's just, it's not looking like it's going to work out. So we turned around, we went back to the highway and we got to the highway and there was a lady there in a sprinter van type of thing that had broken down and we're standing there in the pouring rain and we're like, you know, what should we do? Should we keep rolling on the highway? We saw about 15 miles of highway to get to our forest service road that we think is open. We mm -hmm. don't even know for sure because we we don't know if it's open. It should be because it should be further past all the fires, but you know, there's a chance that it's not open. And we have to ride the highway even further. So we decided, you know what? <clears throat> it's getting late now. We're screwing around too much. Let's just go back to town, get a hotel. We looked at the weather forecast. Tomorrow's supposed to be sunny. So let's just dry everything out, <clears throat> which is what we're doing over here. <laughs> got everything laid out. We got the heater going. Everything is drying out now. And we're going to pack everything back up and just get on an early start tomorrow morning. Our plan is ri early rise and start really, really early. We want to start at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, I feel so much better now getting a nice full night of sleep in that big, huge king size bed. It was so much, so much nicer than sleeping. I felt like my air mattress was floating. We were, we were floating in water. Like I was suspended above the water at least. But you know, the sides of the tent are leaking. So the sleeping bags are starting to get wet. But anyway, that's behind us. We're all dried out. It's not supposed to rain today. And we are now in the Trowbridge trailhead here going through this beautiful forest. Let me check this out. Yeah.
just happened last night. Wow. That was one snowstorm. Welcome to Detroit, Oregon. Well, at least the at least the flag's blowing in the right direction. Oh yeah, that's good. So apparently this town burned down in uh, 2020. And they're just now getting it rebuilt. They so said they don't get a lot of tourists in here right now. Uh, they're trying to get this restaurant opened up again. But they gotta get people back in and a lot of the houses have been rebuilt. Fires are just really devastating. Yeah. You know, the ones we've had down in California have been very devastating. So, come yeah, visit. Man. Come support. Yeah, help them open back up. Detroit. Detroit, Oregon. What a nice place. Mm -hmm. There's a reservoir right over here we rode along. There's some beautiful mountains. There's lots of camping. Great place to raise your kids. Uh, Oregon's just awesome. I think Oregon, so Oregon is awesome. I love everything about it. It's just that the only reason I don't live in Oregon, I think, is mainly because of the, the weather. I'm kind of spoiled in California, but I like everything about Oregon. Good morning. So uh, this is where we slept last night. We rode all the way up from Mackenzie River. We made it all the way up to this uh, cool little, cool little cabin. Very uh, cool. Yeah. So let me show you around. Um, here we have our dining room. Over here we have the bedroom, and uh, over here we have the, the kitchen. So, um, but let me take you outside and uh, we'll look around. It's kind of a basic, basic cabin in the woods. Um, here, I'll show you over here. Uh, go check out the side, the siding on this place. Pretty rustic. but it gets the job done. This side has a little bit more, gets a little more weathered. So that's why it's looking like this. But uh, yeah, so the bikes have been holding up. The racks that I made have been holding up okay. I've got some ideas on things I wanna change. Miss Cools, yeah. her her rack is running, still working pretty pretty good too. But we'll do we're gonna do like a full 
rundown, maybe a full rundown. So it's breakfast time. Miss Schools, what's what's for breakfast? We have um raisin or um, raisin bran cereal. Okay. Almond breeze. Uh, with almond breeze milk, mm -hmm. and then we found a couple of canned coffees at the store in um, Detroit. Mm. Yeah, these are good. I Excellent. That should get us store for today. I'm going down the. We have a a trail to get down this morning. Mm hmm. Yeah, how'd you like the hike up here last night? Yeah, it well, we were. It was really exciting to see the sign for the lookout cabin. It was pretty. It was really steep, but we knew that um, once we saw the sign, we knew that. Well, we didn't actually know it was going to be here. We were still wondering if it was going to be here. Yeah. So yeah, but it was pretty steep. Was yeah, really we gouged steep. up our shins pretty good with the pedals. Yeah, getting over the rocks and the steepness. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Not a bad way to start the morning, Miss Girls. Views of views of plenty. <laughs> wow, not a bad, not a bad little uh, little room you found us. Found for us, Miss Cools. Yeah. Get a back shot here. Wow. Yeah. So we've made it to Portland. Schools, come on down. Let's get this wonderful lighting. lighting. I wish we could do like a like a portrait of us finishing this. Oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we just finished. We're in Portland. We're at this kind of hostel type hotel thing, and uh, right downtown. Well, close to town. Yeah. So it looks like there's a cute little neighborhood downstairs. Yeah, and there's a restaurant right down the street. Uh, we're gonna go celebrate my birthday. Yes, yeah. And uh, celebrate this ride. Yay! We made it. We made it. We got a lot of stuff we could talk about, but we'll do that later. Yeah. So. We'll have to give all the updates. Cool. All right. Cool. See you later. <laughs> okay, we had a great dinner, huh, Miss Cools? Yeah, we did. So now we gotta go see what we can find. We, famous Voodoo Donuts. We didn't have a lot of choice because we didn't want to ride somewhere. So we had to look what was closest to our hotel that we could walk to. And this is what our options are. So how do we go in over here, huh? They always have that same round donut thing going around. Yeah. What about this chocolate? Portland. That would be a good one. Portland food? Yeah. Okay. Should get one of those. Get one of those. So that's what I'm voting for. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Is that the building right there? Is that us? Is that no, that's not it. No. All right. Well, here's our uh, final final conclusion of our trip here for the OCVA 400. Uh, we are we are safely home in California. I don't know if I'd say safely. But we're in California, right? <laughs> All right, we made it back. So, and <clears throat> we're just a few miles now from our, from home. And 
yeah, I thought we'd just do a quick conclusion. Yeah. So after, well, let's see, where were we? Where were we last on the vlog here? We were. I think we had. Ah, we were in the hotel room the last day of Portland. Did we vlog there? Yeah. Okay. I think we have. We, oh yeah, we got into so the hotel room. So we did talk about hotel. We talked yeah. about our arrival in Portland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next morning we got up and uh, we met up with a friend of ours and uh, had coffee hung out for a little bit and then we rode over to the airport to pick up a rental car. We missed our train that we were planning to take back to the Bay Area. And the reason is is that we didn't know for sure exactly what day we were gonna get in. So we didn't book the train tickets. And when we were in that little town of Mackenzie River, I looked online and it looked like there was availability for Saturday's train only, but it was at 2.22 in the afternoon. And so it didn't leave us a lot of buffer. So I said, so we decided to hold off booking the tickets and we waited until we got into <clears throat> that town of, uh, what's it called? Sawyer. D uh, Sawyer. Oh, Sawyer. Wasn't it? Yeah, we got into the town of yeah. Sawyer and then we checked again and it was sold out. So Sandy. Sandy. Oh, Sandy, Right, yeah. Sandy, thank you. Mm -hmm. It was all sold out. So, you know, we thought, well, well, we're just gonna have to keep riding into Portland and we'll figure it out. So anyway, uh, we decided to rent a car and we drove back uh, last night and we got here this uh, this morning, basically. So we're just having yeah. a little bit more food and we're just finishing our ride home. Yeah, so. we had a scenic ride through the, down the, well, partially down the coast. Yeah. And yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful we went morning. through Humboldt and uh, Mendocino. It's beautiful out there. Yeah. Yeah, did we get any footage of that? No. Okay. Uh, Got the camera say. out, ready to film some of it, and I missed some of the part that I wanted to film. Uh, oh, I don't, I, I don't want to get too in, into the talking about the bikes and stuff right now. I thought it would be good to do that later in some other videos, but I don't. Maybe just, just say that all, all of our stuff worked well, just as a general o overview. Like the bikes held up. We got, you got one puncture, I got a puncture, but mine sealed. Yeah. Then uh, I have your tubeless. I have tubeless. You have a tube. So, but it worked out fine because it was like we were able to. It, it went flat as we were at that hotel. And yeah. I was able to do it inside that garage. So it was dry. It was raining, but yeah. here in the garage, I was able to find it. So it, it worked out. Like there was no issues with the flats. Um, your tires. I test rode your bike down a few of the descents with because you were running the 50 millimeter tires and I'm running the two and a quarter tubeless and. You know, what, what, what was your thoughts, like mm. jumping from your tires to my bike with bigger tires? Did it make any difference at all? I could feel a difference. I mean, your tires definitely feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. I mean, mine felt comfortable, but you can feel the volume and you feel like you can roll over stuff just a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah, so. when I got on your bike, I was immediately like, okay, yeah, you can definitely ride it on the, on these tires for sure. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just get a little bit more of a cloud-like cushion on these tires. Yeah. So I would I would prefer this bike over that mm -hmm. for that route. But you can definitely do it on this bike with these skinnier tires, no problem. The gravel out there was just really smooth. <clears throat> and, it, and even in the rain, it, didn't, it wasn't like it, there was muddy sections where it would pack up. So it was very good, well-maintained gravel roads in Oregon. Oregon yeah. spends a lot of money on their gravel roads. You can tell the Forest Service was actually out there working while we were riding through on many different of the many different roads through many different national or you know Oregon state parks. Yeah. You know, or national forest parks, whatever they're called. So yeah. 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 I was wondering if they were putting down fresh gravel before like the winter is coming. I don't know if that, maybe they just do it all year round. Yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah. Because it will get snowed in up there where we were at. Yeah. So maybe That's they true. are trying to get it done before the snow. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so no real equipment issues. Mm -hmm. I do have some, lots of experience now with the racks, which I want to apply to my next rack. So these worked out great. They were nice, uh, they were worked well for kind of like prototyping what I'm trying to create for these bikes. And then the bag setup, and it's always like a learning process and it's always, you know, I learn something on every trip. 
that I want to apply to the next one. And I learned a lot about the rack geometry and where we put the bags and things I want to do a little bit differently. But the racks held up, they didn't break. Um, so I had my, f I was really nervous the whole time, like, did I undersize all this? Because we mm -hmm. loaded these racks with way more weight than, mm -hmm. I, than I was originally designing them for. I was like thinking, okay, I'm just going to do ultra light, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, and a bivy on the rear racks. That's mm -hmm. all I'm putting on it. We ended up with rain gear and food, food and water and cans of food, like canned beans and tortillas. You know, we're packing all the stuff and then I'm just like, oh man, <laughs> it's gonna be so hard to explain this, that my rack just exploded on the trail and we're like stuck out there and it's raining. How am I gonna tell people? So I really wanted to be able to report back that, it, that they didn't break, so. They held up and they still feel strong. Yeah, they have. They are. I haven't examined them yet, and I will look that over later when we get back and unpack everything. So anyway, uh, the total ride was about. It was a little over 400 miles, and it was about for us. It actually ended up. If you know, it, it the route was supposed to be 30,000 feet, but I think it was a little bit over that, climbing wise. Uh, and we did yeah, it in. Been. We did it in what, five and a half days. We started in the afternoon on Sunday. We finished on Friday afternoon or Friday evening. We had one day off in between. Uh, so total ride time, I don't, total, total, like the number of days we rode it was what, four and a half, is that five and a half or four and a half? Uh, we must've been riding for four and a half days. At least four and a half yeah. days. Cause we took, we, let's see. We took one day off. Yeah. We left Sunday Monday. afternoon. Yeah, Sunday yeah. To we Sunday. we left Sunday after we got off the train that morning. We just hopped on our. We just got some food in town and then we just started riding because we thought about getting a hotel there and then starting in the morning fresh. But it's like, why? You're already tired. Mm -hmm. Let's just start riding. Let's go like 50, 60 miles and find a place to camp out because you're just not, you're not gonna sleep that well in a hotel anyway. So let's just go. That's mm -hmm. what we did, and that was great. That camp that first night was. Camping wise, we had, we camped out, what, three nights we, we thought, three nights out? And of yeah. those three nights, the first night was awesome. The second night was terrible, it was in the rain, but not too bad, actually, it wasn't too bad. And then the third night we camped out, we stayed in that cabin. In cabin. And that yeah. was awesome. That was amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Not Best experience. Help. I want to stay up there again. Yeah. I want to ride right, actually right now I just want to go back and just go up to that cabin and just hang out there for a couple of days. That place was so cool. It was Wasn't really cool. It? Yeah, yeah, it was. The views out of that window oh, were amazing. The views were amazing. Yeah, All right. It was amazing. Well, thanks again, Miss yeah. Cools, for joining me. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Thanks for making it seem easier than it was. <laughs> and uh, yeah. looking forward no. to our next one. <laughs> Definitely. Alright. So thank so, you all for watching. Thank you. Thank you for everyone that hosted us and Yes. Thank you yeah. to Brent for the okay. coffee. Hook up on the coffee. We got two bags of Stumptown roasted beans. Thank you very much. So check out Stumptown if you're in Portland. And uh, Brent is one of the roasters there. That's right. So hit them up, get some coffee from Stumptown. And uh, yeah. And go ride to the OMTM OCVA 400 route. You will not be disappointed, I promise. No, it's beautiful. Just maybe wait till spring <laughs> you don't want to ride it now but you know you could wait till there's some good weather in the next couple of weeks so you could probably do it yeah it might i don't know if this time of year will just start to get rainier but maybe they'll still have a few weeks yeah it could get some weather, good weather in the next yeah some good weather could change so we'll see still early but otherwise you know maybe i don't know spring or or summer is probably good yeah spring yeah. might be cool it might be there might be ice and snow on the roads though yeah Alright everyone, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.